I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Vision is Better. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about using filters for your landscape photography. In the last episode I kind of blasted you a little bit and I hope I didn't hurt your budget too much. Um, but I had been asked a number of times by people who wanted to get into using filters, uh, how do you navigate, you know, buying all of this stuff? Now that you've got the stuff or you've been scared off entirely by the price of it, um, you might want to use, you know, know how to use it. So there's a couple considerations that, that I want to talk to you about using filters. The, the first, of course, is why you might want to use filters. Every digital, and, and this conversation is geared towards digital photographers, those that are using film, the, the considerations are similar. In fact, in some ways, especially if you're not using post-production, uh, the desire to use filters may be even greater. There, there are more reasons, more compelling reasons to use more filters because you need to get it right a little bit more in camera. Although these days, most people that are photographing with film are also bringing those negatives once scanned into the digital darkroom and making tweaks there. So for those of you that are digital photographers, one of the first reasons you might want to use filters is because of the limited dynamic range of our sensors. Now, I'm a big fan of using that limit um, you know, because the camera can only expose for a certain range, if you expose more for the bright areas of the image, you get really great shadows. And I love shadows as a compositional, excuse me, a compositional device. Um, but there are times when you don't want those shadows. There are times when you want to bring a little bit more life and light into, for example, the foreground of a landscape photograph. And so if, if you expose for the sky on a normal landscape photograph and the sky is much brighter outside of the dynamic range of your photograph you're going to have a very dark foreground and if you have elements in that foreground that you really want to show as well as the dramatic sky how do you do that well you could uh, somehow light that entire foreground that would take a lot of work it would probably look a little artificial and most of us don't want to carry more electronics into the field uh, so the easiest way to do it is to darken the foreground, excuse me, darken the sky or the background, uh, darken the lighter elements of the image in order to, uh, if you darken the, the lighter elements, you can ex bring greater exposure into the foreground. All right. So you're not trying to hold back the sky with your exposure. The filter does that, allowing you to expose in such a way that the foreground is still bright and and draws attention to the things you want to draw attention to. But the background is still kind of moody and dark. That would be one of the first reasons you would want to do that, in which case you would use a split neutral density filter. That's a filter that allows you um, in various stops, one stop to three stop usually, uh, to hold back part of the image. Now, I don't always use a graduated neutral density filter with the graduated neutral density part on the top. There are times I angle it and use it in a corner. There have been times I've inverted it and use it to darken up a bright patch of water. Everything else in, this, in the frame actually works, but the water or the foreground is too bright, so you can invert it and use it that way, still holding back the brighter elements of your image, allowing the exposure values for, for the whole frame to kind of fall in line with the what would have been the darker elements of the image. I hope that makes sense to you. So it would be the first reason you might want to use it. Second reason you might want to use filters uh, is to, uh, to slow things down. Actually, before I get to that, let me go back to the split ND filters. Using a split ND filter there are two kinds. There's a hard transition, which means the, the graduation from the three stops uh, to the, the transparent part of the filter. The hard transition is a much faster transition. It's, it's dark and then it's light. Whereas the soft transition is much smoother and slower and takes a little bit, it's a little more subtle. And there are, there are times when you're going to use, want to use one over the other. For example, if you're photographing a landscape and it's just a pure horizon of ocean, it's very straight, uh, a hard transition is probably what you want. Soft transition is really helpful when that horizon is a little bit kind of jaggy and like mountains or uh, it's not straight uh, or not close to straight, a little bit easier. What you need to know on 
either of them, but especially a hard transition and defilter is, uh, excuse me, a hard transition neutral density, uh, graduated neutral dent. This is hard shit to say. A, a hard transition graduated neutral density filter forgotten what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, when it's a hard transition, the more you stop down your lens, the harder that transition will appear. So if you want less of a hard transition, consider keeping your, all other things being equal, consider keeping your aperture a little wider open. If you crank it down F22, apart from losing a little bit of image quality, you're also going to really harden up that transition from dark to light. You might not want that. Um, the same is true on a soft transition, but a little less so. So keep an eye on your depth of field. It has an effect on the transition of your graduated neutral density filters. Look at that. I got it right out. It just, it came out when I wasn't thinking too hard. So the second thing you might want to use a filter for is to slow things down or give the appearance of slowing things down. Now this effect can be, of course, like anything else, completely overused. I'm guilty of that as well. But if you want the, for example, if you want a body of water, instead of being very particular with the waves to smooth out and be a much um, more uniform graphic element in your photograph or to communicate a mood of serenity or calm or to bring those crashing waves, create a little bit more of a misty effect, then slowing it down by a few stops is helpful. A polarizer will do this. It'll usually knock a stop or two off of your exposure, but uh, a hard, excuse me, a solid neutral density filter like a three stop or Lee's uh, little stopper, which is six stops, or their big stopper, which is 10 stops, that will slow your exposure down dramatically and allow you to get those really great lines in the sky or in, in the ocean to calm things down. Can also get rid of crowds. If you're photographing, the, the example I gave last week was in Paris. If you're photographing at the Arc de Triomphe and every photograph you get is of you know individual cars going around and you want a more of a focus on the architectural elements, then you could put a big stopper on and expose that thing for uh, a minute to two minutes three minutes even, and you wouldn't have a single spectator, you wouldn't have a single vehicle unless the vehicle was parked and not moving because the, the effect of the time allows those things to kind of cancel each other out. So that might be one reason you want to use a solid ND filter, depending of course on um, how bright it is out or how dark it is out, the number of stops will vary. And you can use those things in, in uh, combination with each other so that you use a hard uh, excuse me, a solid neutral density filter in front of or behind a transitioned, uh, a graduated neutral density filter to darken your background or your foreground and also bring the exposure, the whole exposure down a few stops. This will take a little bit of experimentation on your part, but I think you'll find you get the hang of it pretty quickly. The other kind of uh, filter that you might consider using is a polarizer. And a polarizer is another one of those effects you just can't reproduce in Lightroom. Polarizer will take the uh, the reflection off of things. It will uh, create a, a, quite a dramatic effect in terms of changing lighter bodies of water because they're reflecting the light from the sky into darker bodies of water. You don't always want to use a, a polarizer because sometimes, again, this is about graphics. It's about uh, elements in your frame. Sometimes you don't want, it, even though we say, you know, get those reflections off there. Sometimes the reflections are exactly what you want. In, even if it's not something recognizable, like, you know, the red trees in autumn reflecting in, in the water, sometimes it's just the sky itself, which makes the body of water a little lighter and contrasts that with the banks. So if you have really dark uh, banks in your landscape and um, going down to the lake, having a lighter colored lake provides some contrast. Dark banks, dark lake, you might not be able to make them out and compositionally that polarizer might actually fail you rather than give you uh, an advantage. Whereas if you've got snowy banks and a really dark black river, especially you know in black and white, that can be really effective and taking that reflection off takes it from being sort of a silvery surface, not a lot of contrast between the banks of the, the snowy banks and the water itself. You use the polarizer, suddenly that water goes nice and black. You got a beautiful contrast. That might be one of those times that you want to use a polarizer. Very difficult to do this sort of thing in post-production with either Lightroom or Photoshop. So those are the three common filters that I use. Either, uh, a, let's see if I can do this, a graduated neutral density filter, 
I prefer three stops. I don't think two is very helpful. Um, it can be. One is, for me, is I, if the dynamic range is such that I need a one-stop filter, I can probably do that in Lightroom. So I like a three-stop, and I carry a hard and a soft. I, I love a three-stop. Uh, solid neutral density filter but I also love the big stopper from Lee which is 10 stops and then a big polarizer filter there are some there are various polarizers out there there are thinner ones so that you don't get vignetting watch your vignetting with a polarizer or anytime you're stacking them in front of uh, of each other eventually you're going to get some vignetting a couple ways to deal with this either take the filter off which I do anyway, I like to get a safety shot. So even once you've used all of these filters, occasionally it's worth doing a few safety shots without any of the filters on, just to just to sort of hedge your bets a little bit. Uh, but you could take the polarizer off. You could also shoot four to five. If you shoot four to five and you're doing landscape um, or even, you know, portrait orientation, it'll cut off that part of the frame. So if you compose, considering that you want a four to five framing or if you change that in your camera yeah, or a square of course a square would be fine too but any alternate um or yeah, excuse me aspect ratio in your frame will allow you to get that vignetting off if um if there's no other options of course um, remember that a polarizer filter on an ultra wide lens will also depending on the uh, the angle of the sun and and where you're pointing can give you kind of a wave like pattern where it sort of darkens up and then lightens again it looks a little weird so really watch that when you're using ultra wide lenses anything from 70 to 24 can provide that sort of um, um, that weird banding in the sky anyway i hope this has been helpful to you leave your comments in the comments below please subscribe if i can help clarify any of this from this episode or the last leave a comment i'll see what i can do we'll see you next time remember gear is good but vision is better